الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد ولا علی و صحبہ وسلم اما بعد احب تف اللہ کنٹینیو آن ان آر اسٹڈی آف سم آف دا مسائل اور ایشوز آف نکاح اینڈ وی آسک اللہ دی اومائی ٹو ایکسیپٹ آر گڈ اینڈ فرگیو آر ایو اینڈ بلس اس وتھ اخلاص وتھ بیٹ علی سنت نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ مے اللہ بلس اس آل جنت پر دوس اینڈ دا مسلمس ان جنرل آمین یا رب العالمین Ahabatifillah, we need to discuss very briefly before we continue with the ahadith so we have a, a stronger background in the conditions for nikah and the uh, arkana, nikah and so forth, the pillars of, uh, of marriage. So we left off, we were talking about the Arkan and Nikah, the pillars of marriage. And the pillars of marriage, it consists of two. Al-Ijab wa Qabul. Al-Ijab refers to the statement or pronouncement from the Wali, you know, the guardian of the woman. Or the one who... Uh, is in place of the wali and it is a statement issued from him in which he says uh, you know he has married such and such woman to you you know to you as the suitor or something similar to that and as you'll find in many of the books in fiqh, when describing uh, this, they mention the Arabic language. He said, O men yuqum maqamahu bilavd in kah o tazweej min men yuhsinu al arabiya So they mention the Arabic language. And the scholars mention that the Arabic language, some of them anyway, that it is not necessary if the parties of course don't understand the Arabic language but it is what has the same meaning that is the most important thing is that what that it's understood to mean that this person who is the wali or the guardian is uh, giving away this woman the woman in marriage And, of course, the Qabul, it is the pronouncement from the, uh, from the, the, the groom or the person in the place of the groom. So this is called Qabul in Arabic. This is the one who uh, is accepting this. So these are the two pillars of Nikah, who's accepting the woman for marriage. And, and he says, Bilav Qabaltu. Uh, O radaytu hadha nikah, meaning that I accept or that I am pleased with this marriage. So this is, this right here, this two levs with the other conditions for nikah and so forth, solidifies the marriage with the guardian, with the witnesses and so forth. And we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, so those, it's a very simple process in Islam. So those are the two pillars. The two pillars, again, are ijab wa qabul. And ijab refers to that the, 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 the guardian is giving away the woman in marriage. And qabul means that the groom is accepting the woman and is pleased with the marriage. The conditions of nikah are four. So this is a very basic... Uh, understanding and we'll talk about some other very important issues but we're going to try to keep as basic as, as possible but also where we can gain some benefit into those things which uh which we deal with as communities so the conditions for nikah are four shurut nikah arba here to ayin zojain so the first thing the first condition is that the uh, husband and the wife are specified So that way it's it's known. So for example, as uh, 
you'll find in some of the lessons or some of the from the statements of the scholars that they mention f uh, an example of this if for example a man he has three daughters and a suitor comes to marry his daughters so he's the wali of course and he says I have given you my daughter in marriage they say that this would not be sufficient for the shart, this ta'ayin is ojain, for specifying this ojain, because we don't know, he has three daughters. So it hasn't been specified. But of course, if it's specified, I've given away my daughter uh, so-and-so, or he points to one, she's there, she's the one that's there present. I've given away my daughter. You know, it needs to be specified. This is very important. This is one of the conditions of nikah. The second uh, condition that they mention is a rida azojain that the uh, the husband and the wife are both pleased, so that the and 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 that denotes that they're not being forced. So it's not uh, permissible to force one of them to accept. So you can't force the man to marry a specific woman, and you can't force the marriage as the guardian even to marry a particular suitor uh, and in order to gain this rida or this um, acceptance from the um, from the bride is in the situation if she is a virgin uh, of course acceptance is required from the virgin and the um, and the woman who's been married before. Uh, you, so you need their permission. But as the Prophet ﷺ said, samat al bikr wa natq al thayb in meaning. So that the Prophet ﷺ specified for us or clarified for us that the virgin, her silence is her acceptance because maybe she's so shy, you know, she's never been in this situation, she's young and so forth. So, uh, due to her shyness, her, uh, her silence, her being silent is considered her acceptance. And the one who is, has been married before, of course, her, you know, requiring her to articulate uh, that she is... Uh, pleased that she accepts this proposal and so forth. This is very important uh, for them, and so it, it's very important. And perhaps in our society, we it, it's uh, some of these issues are a little bit um, they're relevant, but they're not as prominent and prevalent because uh, yes, we have virgins and so forth, but due to the nature of the societies and the shyness and those issues pertaining to that and women having to speak up more so generally you'll have that you won't have that situation that similar situation but it's very important that the woman be made to understand this that to not be shy in this matter meaning not to be shy her father uh, so he should not put pressure, say you must marry so-and-so and this and that and the other and force her and then she is forced or she uh, agrees to that but when really she's just fearful of her father and marrying someone she's displeased with. So this, this could be a problem. So it's very important to make it understood that uh, what the shyness, what the result of being silent, that it is a form of acceptance, as the Prophet wasallam said. The third condition, so we mentioned the first condition, which is specifying the, the, the spouse and the, I mean the bride and the groom. The second one is that they're both pleased, or rida. And the third is that the wali, uh, it's conditional that he be a male, free, meaning not a slave, uh, mature, and uh, having sound intellect, and also able to 
deal with a woman's affairs and that he be just. Also, that it is also a condition that they share the same religion, meaning that, of course, even, uh, for example, for reverts or converts, that the parents may be Christian, they may be Jew, they may be Buddhist, whatever. So the father of the woman that has become Muslim, he no longer is the Islamic guardian. He, he cannot give his daughter away in marriage Islamically. He, of course, he can be present and, and all those other things, but he is not a suitable Islamic guardian because he must be Muslim in order to fulfill that role as the Islamic guardian. And with regards to that, uh, the presence of a guardian, so they must be free, male, adult, trustworthy, both parties must su subscribe to the same religion. And in the situation of where the uh, woman is a non-Muslim marrying to a Muslim man, a, a Christian woman, a Jewish woman uh, marrying a Muslim man, then in this situation the imam or the leader or whoever is in authority or if she has to choose a guardian, a Muslim guardian, uh, then in this situation, uh, this this would be the case. So even her her father, who is a non-Muslim as well, would not be her guardian. And with regards to the people who have the most right to be the guardian, the woman's father is the one who has the most right of giving her away in marriage. He's the wali. And then if he's not present or due to the fact that maybe he's not practicing, he doesn't pray, he's not, you know, he's left Islam, whatever, uh, then her, her grandfather, regardless, uh, and, and those on the father's side going up the lineage, could be up to the grandfather, great-grandfather, whatever, or her son, if she has a son, uh, and, and so forth, then her first brother or her half-brother or their uncles or her first uncle or her second uncle or sons or the closest in kinship to her uh, or the leader, the Muslim leader, the judge, the imam of the local masjid, which would probably be the case in the West, or someone she has appointed that's trustworthy and fulfills the other conditions for being the wali. And the fourth condition for marriage is that there should be uh, present uh, two witnesses. Uh, so, and the only, according to the Madahib, uh, uh, the Madhab, uh, the Hanafiya, except without, uh, make that not a condition, but the other Madahib, and what's very clear from the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu La Nika Illa Bi Wali, which is a Sahih statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a sound hadith, letting us know that the nikah, the marriage, is not legitimate without uh, the Wali. And then, uh, uh, sorry, we were referring to the um, to the shahidain, to the shahud. And so the marriage also can only be valid with the uh, two male witnesses. So without the two witnesses that are just, you know, uh, male witnesses, that are uh you know you know practicing they're they're muslim then that would make up for the conditions of nikah so again to make it clear uh the four conditions for nikah the first is that you specify the woman that's being married or the the zaujain both the male and the female need to be specified because perhaps the male isn't there as well. That's another situation. Some people now with the internet, with being in different localities, uh, 
perhaps a marriage takes place and there has to be a wakil on behalf of the husband and the parents are there on behalf of the daughter. So some situations that I'm aware of, a situation where a woman was in one country, the man was in another country, and the parents were in a third country. So in order to fulfill this, the man had to give up his, uh, have a wakil, someone on behalf of him, accept the marriage proposal to fulfill his role and say, yes, I accept her and so forth. And on, on behalf of the woman, because she's in another country, then the parents, also the guardian, was in place, you know, the father. And the father was present and the with two witnesses and the imam or the judge and they went before the judge and they fulfilled the marriage contract with all the conditions. So this can be, uh, and all of this had to be specified, of course, in paper, that the wakil, the man had a wakil, and the woman, of course, had her father as the guardian to accept on her behalf. So it's very important to specify the husband and the wife, of course. And the second condition, of course, is a rida, is that they're both pleased with this marriage, no one is forced. The third condition is that there's a wali for the uh, woman, and the wali must be uh, free a male who's mature, who's sane, who has uh, the ability to look after her affairs and who is of the same religion as her being a Muslim man. Um, and the fourth condition being that there are two witnesses present. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.